What's up guys, Thomas from FJ6 Speed Factory and today we're going to go over how your clutch system works in a manual transmission car and what you need to know before you buy an aftermarket clutch. In a manual transmission car, the clutch acts as a linkage between the transmission and the engine. And when the clutch is disengaged, the transmission stays still. But once you engage that clutch, it grabs onto the flywheel and sends power through the transmission and onto the wheels. But what actually happens when you push in that clutch pedal and how exactly do all these components work together? Here we have the engine and inside is the crankshaft. Now bolted to the end of the crankshaft is the flywheel and the flywheel is the surface that the clutch discs engage with. But to move the clutch disc back and forth, we use a pressure plate and when the car is in gear and you let your foot off the clutch pedal, it moves the clutch fork, which is connected to the throw out bearing and in turn presses against the pressure plate spring, which is marked here in white and engages the clutch disc against the flywheel. If you take a look through our website, you'll find clutches listed in various stages, ranging from stage one to stage five. Now the higher the stage, the higher the torque rating, and that torque rating is determined by three factors. You have friction material, clutch type, and the pressure plate. Now the differences in friction material on clutches is similar to the different compounds found in brake pads. On one end you have ones that are designed specifically for the street, they're great for daily driving, they're easy to engage, they last quite a while, but they don't have as high of a torque rating. Now on the other end you have ones designed specifically for racing, these are going to have a very aggressive clutch engagement, they're not going to last as long, but they have a very high torque rating. The two most common friction materials are organic and ceramic. Organic is great for daily driving on the street, but some can even do very well on the track. But if you have a race car and you're putting down some power, ceramic is great because it can handle a lot of heat, a lot more torque, and it can handle a lot of repeated engagements. Now you'll also probably notice that these two clutches look a little bit different. This is a full face clutch while this is a six putt clutch. Now the full face clutch is gonna give you smoother engagement and it's typically gonna last a little bit longer. While a six putt clutch has much less surface area, so the same pressure is going to be increased on these six pucks, giving you a little bit higher of a torque rating, but this is going to be a much more violent engagement and it's not going to last as long. In addition to the six puck clutch, we also have four puck and three puck clutches. And as you move to fewer and fewer pucks in your clutch, you're going to lower the drivability of your car in the street with increased chatter, transmission wear, and a more violent engagement. But a lot of that has to do with the next component, which is the pressure plate. This here is the pressure plate, and this is a spring-loaded metal plate that applies a clamping force on the clutch and pushes it against the flywheel. These vary in clamping force, and the higher the clamping force, the higher the torque rating, but it also means you're going to have a much heavier clutch pedal, which may not be the best thing if you're driving this on the street. When we start increasing the pressure and the torque on the clutch system, the stock clutch fork starts to become the weak point. So with any clutch upgrade, we highly recommend that you also upgrade the clutch fork and the fork pivot. This one from Varus is billet and it can handle up to a thousand pounds and this is something that you're not going to worry about snapping unlike the stock one. Now the last component of the clutch system is the flywheel. And some kits do come with these and the ones that do, they're available in two versions. You have a normal version, which is the stock weight, and you have a lightweight version. That lightweight version is gonna free up some rotational mass, which can free up some horsepower, but the big thing is how much faster the revs fall when you're changing gear. Now that's a great thing when you're racing and go down the straightaway, but it's not so great if you have to drive through traffic on the street. So it's one thing you wanna consider. To wrap things up, you don't need an aggressive six puck clutch just to hold the power down of basic bolt-ons or even if you're running moderate boost. On our last time attack car, which is a turbocharged FRS, we were running about 390 wheel horsepower with 300 foot pounds of torque and we're using ACT's XT Street Clutch, which is a full face organic material clutch and we're holding down the power just fine. But if you do want that more aggressive clutch engagement, maybe you're building a drift car and you want that really aggressive clutch kick, then maybe go for a six puck. Maybe even consider a three or four puck. Just be aware that it's gonna cause more wear on your transmission and the clutch itself is also going to wear out faster. If you guys wanna learn more about all the clutches available for the FRS BRZ or 86, you can head directly to our website by clicking right here. And on each product page of the clutches, we're gonna have the torque rating listed in the description. Now, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to send us an email or give us a call. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button down below. 
This is Thomas, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Now, the different friction materials. Street. <laughs>